Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hello and welcome back everyone. The Cube's live coverage here in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. VMworld 2019 coverage. Dave, 10 years of Cube coverage. We've been yep. started out 10 years ago. VMworld's the last show standing. Our next guest is Todd Forsythe, CMO of Veritas. Great to see you. First time on the Cube. Thanks it for coming is on. inaugural. I can't I, that. <laughs> after 25 years in the industry, it's crazy. With your with your talent. I think we're going to have a good segment here. I'm sure, I'm sure we will. <laughs> Entertaining. No, seriously, we've, we've known each other. We're on an advisory board together. You're a prolific uh, marketer. You do a lot of great things. You're progressive. You try new things uh, with startups, but also you've got to run a big operation. That's right. Um, MarTech stacks, you like to look at platforms. This is a replatforming of the internet we're seeing with Cloud 2.0, and I want to get your thoughts on this because you got a unique perspective at Veritas, you know, an, a, an older brand, modernized, right. in real time, right. new products, refresh, in a massively changing growth, still growth market. It's a, data, it's a data business. That's right, 100%. So what's your take on this? As you look at the landscape, you got the modern brand, you got to take it out there, new products. You know, it's interesting. I had a, uh, a really fascinating conversation yesterday with a customer. And the, the customer said, you know, I, I was walking through the expo hall and I saw Amazon, I saw Microsoft, I saw IBM, I saw Dell Technologies, I saw Kubernetes, I saw Pure, I saw Nutanix. I thought I was in my own data center. <laughs> and it's interesting, you say, I think about our business and in, in our business, data doesn't care. Like, you know, data doesn't care if you're running a modern architecture. Data doesn't care if you're running legacy. So what we're really focused on is helping companies manage data in highly complex and extremely demanding environments, regardless of their infrastructure. And Cloud 2.0 speaks to the complexity of that because you know, these, and we were talking earlier with um, VMware about these categories that used to exist, these Gartner Magic Quadrants. You know, you can't put something that's a silo, and not, not a silo in a silo, if you're horizontally They're, disrupting. Uh, and data does that, data has to move around, it's in, and it's got to move everywhere. So there's no more silo boxes of categories. 100% agree, you know, it's interesting. We, we launched uh, Enterprise Data Services earlier this year, and that was the precise reason why, because we've re-looked at what data protection is. Data protection is no longer backing up your data from a cloud to a cloud, from your on-prem, it's a much broader category. It, it, it covers how your data becomes available, how resilient you are, uh, understanding where your data is, how it's categorized so you can respond to ransomware attacks, manage regulations around the world. So our view of data protection is a platform that is horizontal and cuts across. Well, and you guys have, I mean, the, the heritage of Veritas was you know, the original data management company, right? Yeah. With no hardware agenda and, and, and so, uh, my question for you, Todd, is what attracted you to Veritas? Uh, it, uh, softball question. So, the most amazing customers any company could possibly imagine, Global 2000, the top telecommunications companies, the top banks, top stock exchanges. Secondly, a product strategy that's really zoned in, back to your point about this, a platform that cuts across all of these diverse technologies and solves problems for customers. It abstracts them from the complex environments that they're in so they could focus on outcomes. And Greg has done an amazing job recruiting a top-notch leadership team. So, so it was really great product, good, good, good leaders. Okay, now follow up. Is you guys, you know, num number one, or, you know, top anyway, right in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Everybody wants a piece of your hide. <laughs> the whole, whole industry's coming at you. So what's the sort of messaging strategy to keep top spot from both you know, outward facing and also sure, product sure. development? So, so we look at two types of competitors. Uh, competitors that are offering point solutions, predominantly playing in the mid-market. And when you're a large financial institution and you have a highly complex environment, you've, you're in a multi-cloud world, uh, you can't afford to have a siloed backup data. So you need to understand 
how your data is classified, where it's stored. So if you're responding to ransomware and that ransomware attack is targeted to a specific server, you need to know if you have PII there or if you have cat pictures there. If you have cat pictures there, then... <laughs> Let them have it. Let them have it, exactly. <laughs> so our platform cuts across protection, availability, and insights, which categorizes your data. So the data gets categorized in net backup, extends to the analytics platform so you know where your data is, and you can take action on your data. The, the hard question, on Dave, since the softball give you a hard one. You got to refresh the brand. Uh, Veritas has got a lot of pros and cons. The pros are, you know, well-known, a lot of customers. Um, I got a customer question later, but the brand is important because you have the new modern platform products, yeah. platform and products. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get the name Veritas, has old meaning. You have a lot right. of older customers, right. you have legacy customers. How are you going to go out there and, and, and refresh? What's the, what's the, is there any new plans there? Uh, we have a, a ton of plans. You know, it, we, we have the product, we have the customers. The, the, the product, the platform product is, is amazing. We are a quiet company, so we need to be noisier in the marketplace, and we need to insert ourselves into relevant conversations that are top of mind with CEOs and CIOs, whether it's ransomware. If you look at all of the ransomware That's attacks, I read like two weeks ago in the state of Texas, there were uh, 10, 15 municipalities yeah. that were attacked. At the same time. At the same time. Yeah. And we have a solution that can help customers recover from ransomware. So we have to insert ourselves in those dialogue because dialogues because we have a very, very specific point of view that can help customers. Well, but to John's point, right? Everybody who you compete with can, will say, we have a solution that you know, helps solve ransomware. So how do you separate from the pack? Like I said, everybody's trying to take, pick sure, you off. Sure. You know, we want a piece of that install base. Right? You got to keep the install base and you got to keep growing, right? So I'll, I'll lay down the gauntlet. Right, uh, I, would love, I would love any competitor to showcase how they can support 500 workloads, 150 storage targets, 60 cloud providers at enterprise scale with a high degree of reliability. Our differentiator is we can cut across these very complex, very demanding IT environments at scale. I want to get your um, thoughts on the customer journey question because I think you know, you, got, you mentioned the customer base, we've been following what you guys do. I mean, I ran, I was in Bahrain for a uh, regional Amazon event I was covering in the Middle East, and in, in the exhibit with this Veritas, and they reckon, hey, they're the Cube guy. I'm like, hey, <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. But seriously, you guys are everywhere, you got huge customers, but you probably have a lot of customers that are trying to go from here to there. VMware was talking about specifically around, you know, you got the enterprise scale, world and they want that cloud nirvana yeah. and then there's that messy middle in between. So you probably have a lot of transformational stories. What is the patterns of, of customer profile that you see? Some of them making the journey, some of them are having a hard time. Uh, what's, the, what's the state of the mind of the customer that you guys well, have? Well, we, we are base? definitely seeing a hybrid multi-cloud world as, as, as you've heard here this week. We, 52% of our customers are running in a hybrid cloud environment. Uh, and, and we uh, we have a core relationship with their legacy infrastructure and our customers are asking our help to extend their data protection and their net backup environment into the cloud to back up the cloud and across new modern workloads. So our customers are pulling us into their environments to do more. And that's cloud and hybrid. Cloud, cloud and hybrid. Public cloud and on-premises. Yes, and our, our customers are also realizing that they're responsible for backing up their own data in the cloud. There, there's this misperception in the industry that if I move to a cloud provider, the cloud provider will manage my data, when in actuality, you are still responsible for your data. You know, um, uh, Amazon with security has a shared responsibility model. They say, okay, we, we protect the, you know, the EC2, the, the infrastructure for S3, the, yeah. et cetera. You're responsible for pretty much everything else, and I think that you could draft off that message. Yeah, yeah. You guys, two couple years ago, had a, a, a great event called Veritas Vision, um, where everybody came in, and then you, you changed that. Now you sort of go to where the customers are, and I'm wondering, how's that working? Uh, it, was, it predated you, so yeah. I, I won't yeah, ask yeah, you yeah, why yeah. that yeah. decision was made, but <laughs> you know, uh, what, how's it working out? I mean, a company like yours, it was like four or 5,000 people there. It was a so really good event. It, it, a great question, and, and a highly relevant question because we're just about to launch our series. So, you know, having run large, large 
large yeah. user conferences. <laughs> and you look at distribution of your customers and you, know, you typically find that 80% of your customers are coming from the US. You look at our customer base, global, international customers, we have a high percentage of customers that are outside of the US. So our strategy is let's take our user conference, let's take our message, let's take our value proposition to the customer. So we are kicking off next month uh, an entire series around the world, Germany, Paris, uh, Rome, Seoul, Bali, Singapore, Melbourne, our vision series where it's our anti-user conference. We're, we're taking content directly to our customers. Uh, so those regional or those cities based? How is it segmented? Like Amazon, so it's yeah. like Amazon Summit kind of thing, you go to? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so as, as a follow up, it says, so it's a seasoned pro in this, in this space. What, why, not, why either or? Why not do both? I mean, it's budget, obviously, one thing. It's expensive to run these events, I get it, but. I, I would prefer to put more custom, more money to where the customer the is field, at. It's, kinda, yeah, yeah, into the fields. You know, the, one of the life lessons uh, being a marketer is go to where the customer is. Uh, don't try to get the customer yeah. to come well, to you. Well, your head of sales so, will love that message. <laughs> yeah. we know well. So yeah. our strategy is to go where the customer is. Yeah, and that does help sales, actually. So while you're on that, um, point, you're a very progressive marketer for the folks that don't know you, I'll share with them that you, know, you like to try things and you love startups and you love to promote new things. Yeah. The marketing stack, I've said on theCUBE, and I'd love to have you challenge this if you want, love to debate it. I said, the, market, the MarTech stack just didn't pan out. No, I mean, it, it, no, it, it, it worked, no. it, did it work? Is it evolving, is it siloed, is it cloud changing the MarTech stack? So, so again, pretty uh, aggressive statement, but my point is, Email marketing was great for that generation, still is. There's new organic flows, maybe I'm biased, but I'd love to get your thoughts. How is the marketing tech world evolving okay, so with I'm, cloud computing? So I'm going to say something provocative okay, here. Okay, all right, here we go. I think the CRM industry has gotten B2B marketing wrong. What I mean by that is you look at most CRM capabilities in B2B and they're focused on an individual. They're focused on a lead, they're focused on nurturing an individual, but if you look at our customers in enterprise, individuals don't buy, buying groups, committees, and accounts buy. So where we're focused is looking at accounts and understanding account company-based behavior that shows buying intent and triggers, which then initiate our marketing. So it's not built around a lead, it's built so around account based marketing. Account-based marketing, but uh, account-based insight and intelligence around mm -hmm. is there a project or a buying opportunity? And you know, our good friends at, uh, at Minigo, uh, that's what they do, which is AI-driven, trigger-based marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the industry is going. What's your thoughts on organic marketing? Because one of the things that's hot, and certainly we live this world with theCUBE, and we've been kind of pioneering yeah. this new model where co-creating content together and pushing it out into these digital streams is an organic process. It's, technically earned media and PR parlance, but we're seeing the, uh, the evolution of the, the CMO-like uh, action around storytelling, right? And so yeah. like, yeah. community-based storytelling, it's an organic function, it's hard to control, you can't just buy it, it's got to be kind of nurtured or enabled. That's What's right. your view on that? Because this is an emerging trend. We're seeing VMware just re VMware just reorganized. They had a whole storytelling integrated group yeah. of PR yeah, yeah, pros yeah. Sure. that are acting like the marketing, like in their marketing. Well, you know, the, the, one of the most active customer segments we have is our Vox community. And if you think to your point about co-creation of content uh, in collaboration, our Vox community collaborates on solving problems that customers have, they collaborate. Can you explain what is Vox community? Vox is a community of our technical users where they help each other share best practices yep. and solve problems. A lot of how-to. A lot of how-to. Not Vox yeah. Media. Not Vox Media, correct. Yeah, correct. Just making yeah. sure to get that out there. But Forums, yeah. there's videos. Is this your, is this your community or is it a third party? Okay, it's Veritas. a Veritas community, yeah. And then to your other point, John, um, the, the marketing world has changed. We, uh, we, we've quickly moved into a world where we now have an anonymous relationship with our customer, it, with email, with direct mail. You know, we're always driving to registration to capture a name. That world is 
long gone. Well, Facebook we're, show that's been weaponized, so yeah. you know, there's under, there's right. it's, a, it's a data business. At the, end well, of the, day. the user experience yeah. is horrible, right? And everybody hates that, and so, yeah, there are other ways now. You can use data, you can, you can infer. Yeah, that's right, right. You exactly. You can read the tea leaves, and, you know, probably make a pretty high prediction, or ac highly accurate prediction. What is, what is the most under-reported um, trend that you think marketers should look at in terms of capabilities that, that are working out in the field for you? Uh, I would say the ability to leverage uh, predictive analytics, call it AI or machine learning, understand what's happening at an account and whether there's a buying trigger. I, I, I think accessing that information, learning from that information in terms of how should you initiate a selling motion, and then enabling the sales force with that intelligence, I think is wide open territory. All right, we got it. So a couple other things, okay. if I can, just to yeah. get it in. So you guys made a big platform you know, uh, enhancements a couple years ago, and then a big eight dot, I don't know, whatever it was, eight dot something, two, three, five, I think it was eight dot two. Um, customer momentum, um, it, can you update us on that? Uh, maybe even customer examples, and then I got a partner question. Yeah, so uh, w I talked about the value of a platform, and we'll take uh, uh, Renault as an example. So uh, Renault, net backup customer, uh, Renault wanted to make their uh, virtualized SAP environment highly available, and they looked at a variety of different solutions, and they, they looked at some solutions that were homegrown and others, and they realized that just extending the Veritas platform was faster time to market, 60% 60 uh, 60 cost savings. So there's a perfect example of a customer leveraging our platform play. And a couple of partner questions. So you know, we're here at VMworld, so your VMware partnership, obviously pretty important. Um, and then we're at Pure Accelerate next, next month. You guys you know, are there, you got a big presence there. I know you got a tight partnership with them. That's right. Give us the partner update. Uh, partner update, so we have uh, very solid relationships with uh, Amazon, Microsoft, VMware, Google, Nutanix, Pure, and that's where we're, re we're really doubling down in terms of technology integration, uh, joint go-to-market. Right. And the community site is vox.veritas.com. I just was checking it Thanks. out. Thank you for the plug. Um, and there's other, there's, there's a church yeah. one, it's a religious one, not to be confused with Vox Media. So uh -huh. just want to make sure everyone got that URL. Um, we think community is super important. Thanks for coming on. Keep Excellent. sharing Great. your insights. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Todd Forsythe, CMO of Veritas. More live coverage from VMworld after this short break. <laughs>